Uh, good afternoon and welcome to another week in our garden. It has been sunny all morning but now it's overcast and there is some rain forecast so let's hope we get finished before it rains. We're starting in the bottom greenhouse and we're going to take the bullhorn peppers that are ready. Because we've had all this sun this week it's ripened quite a few off. So we'll get them picked. As you can see there's quite a few turning at this end and then there's some more at that and there's definitely two here we need to take. So let's just have a look. There you are look, that's fine. This little bit of darkness on it will soon lift off as they ripen through in the house in the warmth. And we'll take this one as well. It's there. They're fine. This has actually got a branch that's broken on it, but I'll leave it hanging because the peppers that are on it will still ripen even though the branch is broken. Well, it's not quite broken, but it's broken halfway through. That one's only a small one, that's a half pint. I think that's all I'm going to take in now. They're not quite... The others are just not quite red enough, so I think we'll just take these. The yellow peppers, not quite ready. We'll just leave those for a few days. The chilli peppers aren't doing much at all yet. I thought they would have been red enough a bit, but not yet. Nicked across the garden and have a look what's happening with the sweet corn. It looks ready. Now the, as you can see the tassels have turned brown which is always a good sign. And they feel quite swelled up so I think the best thing to do is cut one. Cut one and have a look. If we just cut one off and we'll have a, it might just break off but yeah, thank you. Let's have a look what we've got. Peel them back. Now this one's called Swift. It's got a little bit at the top knot, right? Let's have a look what it's got here. Now they say, if you put your nail into them and white milk comes out, like that, they're ready. So I would say these are ready. Let's cut one right the way back and have a look. That's a good one. Yes, I think that one's ready. The top hasn't quite ripened, but we'll take that off anyway, look. And then we'll take the bottom off. I think I may as well cut that. We'll cut that off. If you break them, you could you could break all the all the uh, sweet corn though. That's nice enough. We'll have two or three just to try. Right, let's have a look at this one then. Again, top's not quite ready. Yes, that one's good enough. That's a good one. I'll just break the top off. And cut the bottom, I think. And cut that. Good compost. Yeah, that's another nice piece. We'll pop that in the trug. I 
I'll just pick a couple more and leave the leaves on and we'll just take them like that we'll have a bit more time then to peel them off but Just take the tassels out. There we are, we'll take that up like that. You can see it's fully ripened inside. To so just take one more today, I'll take this big one here. Ooh. It's got ants on it. Ants get everywhere in the garden. Let me know since they are. I'll just take that off and cut the bottom off. There you are. I'll just put so it's going up with nice clean leaves. Take the tassels out. Here we are, we'll take that one up and see how we go. Right, it looks like they're all about ready, so I still have to come down later in the week and harvest them before the mice etc decide they want some they had them last year and spoiled the crop so this year i'm determined to beat them we'll take these cabbages because they've fallen over and i do actually put this cover on believe it or not to keep the hot sun off them and it's uh, we'll have these two anyway If they're falling over, I'll just pull them out, I think. Yeah. Roots still on them, so there was fine and... Good cabbage, they're absolutely solid. We'll take the leaves off when we get up to the shed, because the chickens absolutely love the outer leaves. Have a look at the other one. Yeah, it's solid and quite heavy. They say those two leaves are probably compost, but these chickens. And there's just a few of these spring onions left up down the bottom here. These are guardsmen, so we'll take this little row here, then leave that one for another few days. Same again, we lift them. And then when we get to the tank and put some water on it, that's when we'll come apart. So, one more. There you go. And leave as much as the soil on the garden as possible. There you go. So that's a few spring onion, the guardsmen. As always, there'll be a few cores yet. There's actually two we can have this week. There you go. That's a nice cores yet. This one's a little bit bigger, but we'll take it. I'll just wipe that on the leaf, not just to clean it. There you are. still got the flower on. Ah, Diane's actually made me a lemon and zucchini cake and it's absolutely delicious. Now there's no tomatoes to harvest today. We did pick them earlier in the week because if they get, let me show you, if they get redder than that then the pigeons believe it or not actually settle in here and peck at them so as soon as they get a little bit redder than those we have to take them and once we've taken the tomatoes we finish them off in the kitchen they soon ripen when they hit the warmth but it's better than sharing them with the pigeons <laughs> now we're on the little salad patches you see we want two of the little gem 
and one of the Lolo Rosso. So let's take these two, I think. Yeah, we will. I'll pull them out and then Yeah, there's the two little gem. Still getting a little bit of slug damage in here, but that's that's fine. It's only on the outer leaves. It looks like it's been selected for us. But Lola Rosso would do the same. We lift it with the root, and then cut the root off. If you cut them too high, you'll lose most of the leaves on that one. And there's. A white feather on that one as well, that means somebody's watching. I'll just go through the radish and take a few of the radish as well. I'll take two more. Yeah? Mm. I'll take the big one first if I can. There you are, a few of the radish. Not so bad as I thought this, in that there's just two split, so they'll be okay. Now we're up on the potato plot. I did lift this quadrant and laid them all out on top. And we did film them, but unfortunately, Diane has deleted the film so we've lost that now and that was all huge as well I have already lifted one line on this side this morning and the idea was to lift the rest of that line with you and then I'll finish off if you can remember these potatoes on these two we thought we had a bit of blight on them so we cut the tops off and that was four weeks ago now so the skin should be hardened up now and we'll see what what sort of size they've made usually when you cut the tops off early like we did they're very small but even small potatoes will do when you've got none Oh, I've spiked one again. Can you believe it? There we got a few. And looking at them, they're quite clean. Some are very small. I've got a bucket, I'll just get them. Usually there might be one or two rotten ones in there as well. So we'll put the gloves on and it makes it easier picking them up because they don't smell awfully good. Let's see what we can get. Biggest, but they'll do. That's a stone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and what I'm noticing now, there's hardly any slug damage on them. Now, when we was preparing the ground for these potatoes, I did put quite a bit of the coffee grounds in as well. And when I opened the trenches to plant the potatoes, I scattered a little bit of coffee grounds in them as well. Now, whether it's that or not, I don't know. Now, we did put the nemeslug on very, very late. But I don't know if it's the nemeslug going on late or the fact that we put the coffee grounds in that there's hardly any slug damage on the potatoes and in that plot there this year worth remembering for next year it's 
It's a nice piece of soil. I thought they'd have done better than that, but never mind. Let's keep going. They're clean again. And what we'll do, we'll leave them out till they're dry and then we'll store them away. Not a lot, but they'll do. This root looks like it was King Edward, look. It's a bit of a mixed bank this year. Remember these small ones? I'm not going to keep them at all. They can go in there. That's a rotten one, look. It's how it's rotten. And it doesn't smell that it's been blighted, so must be something else that's rotted it. But these are fine, no slug damage. Um, I'll dig the rest of this quadrant, there's only two rows left and then um, we'll see what we've got on the hole. Although there's a little bit on the small side for having the tops cut off four weeks ago I'm pleased with those because I've still got potatoes where if we got the blight we wouldn't have any. Now we've got some Desiree, Charlotte, King Edward in here. A bit of a mixed bag, but they're all they're quite good potatoes. It seems like the Desiree has done about the best. That it always does well on this heavy land. Most of the potatoes out of the first plot that you won't see were all mainly Desiree and they did quite well as well. Right now we'll just leave them to dry for an hour providing it doesn't rain and then I'll pick them up, tray them and put them in the bottom shed. But they are, tops have been cut four weeks, perfectly good hard skins they'll store well. Now there's a few raspberries to pick because we haven't picked them today yet and then we'll go up to the shed and I'll show you what I've been doing with my own ones. Now we've come into the fruit cage and we'll pick some of these raspberries. As you can see they've ripened well and there's a good size on them. They are a very good raspberry. 
We'll get these picked and we'll come back to you. It's just a case of picking the right ones and leaving these orangey coloured ones behind. They'll be tomorrow's. But these deep red ones, they're today's. You see? They just glide off. Lovely those. Look at the size of them. Diane and I will pick them and show you how many we've got. We didn't pick yesterday and that's the result of two days pick. Yeah. So that's very nice. They're all very clean this year and I think that's down to the pheromone trap. I've seen one or two um, flies in there but nothing really serious. Now I've just started cleaning the onions. This is how they've dried out and how they look basically as they come out the garden and I want them to look like these so these will be ready for stringing and they can still sit here and dry out a bit in the sunshine as well what I do is first of if I put my hand around the onion top and I cut them off about an inch higher remember I've got big hands so if you're doing it you might need a little bit more that gives me something to tie them with when we tie and then I just snip the root off and I have a bucket there because it's rather a messy job so if we do it we do it over the bucket it's not so bad now I take some of the skins off that are loose only if they want to come off if they don't want to come off I leave them because they are there for a reason so to come off that's fine if not just leave them but I just need to tidy this the neck of the onion up if you like we're not using them for show so we no need to polish them too much and then what I do, I have this little brush and I just brush the dirt off. Now if I come across a piece like that that wants to come off, I just take it off. You see? And that's all I do. This piece here won't come off, so I just leave them on. And then I stand them in the trays ready to go let's do another one there we go it's one of those jobs that's quite time consuming but it has to be done take the roots off nice and neat then if you look round the neck these loose bits they need to come off really there you are they say if, if they don't want to come that's fine and then I get the brush and brush the dirt off all these bits will go on the compost heap anyway so you see as you brush it some come off anyway but what you don't want to do is be scraping with your nail if you can help it you see that wants to come off that's fine There you go, one onion ready for string. I'll do a brown one to show you, about an inch above that. And then just take the loose off, sort the root out and take that off. And I've got a lot of onions to do. Can you see it just here look, that's what I don't like because I think if that gets damp while it's on the rope, on the string, it will go rotten and then rot the onion so I like to take that pick off. And then if anything else comes off while we brush that's fine. Here you are look, that's coming off. Now if it peels and it shows white that's fine, in a few days that'll turn brown again. 
We don't skin too much off anyway. There you are, look. That's fine like that. I don't want no more than that off, I don't think. Just clean it through. And put it in the tray. Now what I do, I do a few each day. And then if it's a nice day, I put them outside. And if it's not so nice, I leave them in the shed. Harvest this week for you. It's a salad harvest again. It will do us proud for the rest of the week, I think. We've got quite a bit. We've got the spring onions, guardsmen, of course. A couple of cabbage. Very, very solid cabbage. Good for coleslaw. Mini coal. Lola Rosso lettuce. Quite nice that is, it stays, it keeps well. Two courgettes, a few of those very nice raspberries. I went up and I picked three cucumbers out the top greenhouse while Diane was setting up. Some radish, sparkler, always do well. Little gem lettuce, two of those. Some very nice bullhorn peppers very sweet they are very nice peppers three sweet corn no four sweet corn that will do us to start us off and the sweet corn will have a bit more time on monday so we'll probably harvest them then and get them processed and put in the freezer that'll be it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it thank you for watching many many thanks for subscribing we do appreciate it and take care everyone we'll see you next week bye now <laughs>